Month end wrap up, we're gonna talk about you don't wanna fight the Fed and what is the foul put. Stay tuned, we'll discuss this and much more. Hello, this is Michael Loftus for Wealth and Wisdom TV, where education is the key to a successful financial future. First up, don't forget, click show more for additional information and links. Also, if you are looking for a different opinion, that of Wall Street and Big TV, please do consider subscribing. So today, we're going to go through our agenda, big charts always, our signals, tweets of the week, what's on my radar and what keeps me up at night, but it's all around the pal foot. What does that mean? What it means is Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, has flip-flopped in a big way. He went from being hawkish to dovish. That means that he was going to continue to raise rates, okay, continue on quantitative tightening, but what he has done is flip-flopped and has now become dovish. And what that's going to do is, it seems he is basically putting a put in the market, which is a way to secure the market, and the theory is we'll go higher. This is not a good thing. It shows that he is a pawn of maybe the president and also the stock market. Let's go to the big charts. Okay, first up, daily chart. I always talk about how I don't make a lot of moves on daily charts, because you can get flip-flop. But so far year to date, I will admit that I have missed a lot of this upside and I'll explain why in a second. So first off, what do we see? Month end January, a couple things. We broke this trend line here to the upside. That is a good sign. We're above our 50 day moving average. But again, what continues to concern me is low volume. Here's our volume over here. We're still not seeing that big thrust to the upside. Anything else stand out on the daily chart? Right up here is going to be your 200-day moving average. That's going to be big-time resistance on the upside. Talk about that in a second. Now, at the bottom, volatility index. You see my red line? That's the line in the sand. I think if we break that, generally, when we go up below 15, that tells you that we got some more room to run. Now, that being said, a couple things. We talked about our 200 day moving average up here. The question is, at this point, candidly, on the S&P and also NASDAQ, I've missed a lot of this, okay? So, had I been in the market, I probably would have pulled out anyways because I think we're way overbought. So, is it worth it to really get about one and a half percent upside? The answer to me is no. My job is to manage risk. I don't see us going above that 200, but we'll see. The other thing is I do have the luxury of patience. In the month of December, market was down 9.21%. We were able to mitigate 70% or more of those losses, so it's given me more time to be patient in the month of January. First up, short-term signal, positive. Okay, next up, let's go to our weekly view, which is gonna talk about our midterm view. What has changed? Not much. See our trend line here from 2009? Nothing different here, why? We're still below that trend line. So when I look at this, I go, okay, you know, it seems to be not improving, but if you go down here, Here's the thing, little button hook to close out the week there, possibility that momentum will shift up, but despite all that, midterm signal, negative. Next up, let's talk about our long-term view, and that's gonna be our monthly chart. What do I see here? Nothing has really changed. Red dotted line, 12 month moving average. When we're above it, good things happen. When we're below it, bad things are generally happening. Where are we? As of right now, close of month, I'll have Andrew zoom in. We are right on it. So we did not break through. 
Down here is momentum. We've still had a negative crossover. Therefore, our long-term signal is still negative. Next up, let's talk about the Dow. Why am I talking about the Dow? Because I know I'm going to do that only because we mentioned the 200-day moving average. Here's the Dow. Obviously, you had a big surge yesterday. One big company helped it move up. But what do I see here? Two days in a row, 200-day moving average. We hit it and failed. So is this a sign of things to come in the S&P? We'll see, but another reason why I'm holding back in adding equities. Next up, let's talk about treasuries. So what's happened in the treasury market? A lot. Remember that bet I made a couple weeks ago when I said we're gonna go below three? We're going well below three right now. So big moves in the treasury yesterday after the PAL put. Now, what do we see here? First up, we're going down, but our short term went up. So yield spread, remember, we have a video we did last weekend about yield spreads and the importance of it. And if we invert, it shows a sign of recession. So we're down to 0.18 on the yield spread, but with treasuries going down, that's been positive for us. We added to our clients' portfolios some long-term treasuries at the beginning of the year. Next up, tweets of the week. First up, we have Liz Saunders. Since the late 1960s, recessions have followed six of the last seven times. Labor market inversion. When it sinks to minus three, what is that about? It's about unemployment, how many jobs are out there. We have a link to explain it. Bottom line is, we inverted another sign about recession. Next up, our friend Holger from Germany. Great follow. Again, all links are below in these tweets. It's the liquidity, stupid. Once again, it's not just about the pal put, but last week, ECB Draghi, imagine, they're in negative interest rates yet, right now, yet they continue to slow. Do you think we have problems with Fed debt, et cetera, which I'm gonna get into? It is much worse, but we know when they pumped a little bit of money at the end of the year, and Powell brought in his Powell put, then, of course, that's what's helped drive the markets to the upside. Next up, friend, Lance Robert, one of my favorite follows. Great link below. Please take time to read this article. As Ray Dalio notes, the risk to the Fed is a limited toolbox. With rates 50% lower in 2007 and a balance sheet 200% higher, there is less firepower. How long have I been saying that? That is so true, Lance. I believe it. This is going to be a problem. We're going to talk about it more in a second. But first, let's go to what keeps me up at night. <gasps> all right, so the theme is all about what? Somehow put. Despite the Fed putting all this out there, again, everyone thinks I love the charts. It's all I look at. No, I look at the data. You have to look at the data. And it showed us months ago that we are slowing and we're seeing lots of rollovers. So let's get started here. Consumer confidence. Look at that big drop. Jeffrey Gunn, like the Bond King. Self-proclaimed, but the Bond King. The most recessionary signal at present is consumer future expectation relative to current conditions. It's the worst readings ever, he said. This is a big issue. Next up, highlights from Federal Reserve District. Ah, you cannot see this. I know it. Trust me, I'll have a link up here. Boston, New York, Philly, Cleveland, Dallas, San Fran, etc. All of these highlights are talking about slow growth. Again, I have a link up there worth reading telling us slow growth. Next up, what do we have? Spike. One of the bank earnings said we're, they're seeing a spike in write-offs in credit cards. Credit cycle, economic cycle, and the economic slowdown risk is rising. Why? You see that red? Consumer loans delinquency rate. Big time jump, not good at all. This morning, pending home sales. 
Holy moly, 10% down year over year, and it's gone down every single month for the last several months. What do we call that? Slowing. We are slowing. Despite what Powell's trying to do, we continue to slow. How about the data? Again, I do look at the data. This comes from one of our sources that we work with. We pay for the data. What do you see here? Lots of red. Why? Because they're all misses. Germany, big time. Germany is this close to a recession. Italy just entered a recession is what we're hearing. Mexico, United Kingdom, France, Spain, Italy, you name it, right? Bad data everywhere I look. This is what's keeping me up at night. Next up. So let's talk about this Fed situation and put it into perspective, okay? Green line, recession. The line over here going up is the S&P. The purple line is the Fed fund rate. Now, what do you see here? Every time we went into a recession, the toolbox, the toolbox that the Fed uses is bringing rates down. And you can see, and in the new era, if we go back to 2001-2, we're about 6% and they took us down to one and a half. That's called stimulation, okay? When we got it here in 2008-9, what happened? Same thing, they're up about four and a half, five percent 5%. Of course, it went down right to about zero. Helps stimulate the economy, liquidity, and look where we are now. 2.7, excuse me, 2.27% inflation at two. That means we're at zero. That means what do they do when the next recession comes into play? Great article came out this morning. I'll have a link to it. This is a year when the Federal Reserve's credibility has finally died. Hashtag, you know it's coming, the power put. Next up, let's talk about what's on my radar. Surprisingly, there are a few. So what has not worked for me are my hedges in place. I've also been in a decent amount of cash, 10 to 15%. What has worked are four sectors that we've been in. And all of these four sectors are considered pre-recessionary all right when you look at them it's very common the first one is utilities look at that two percent up today again when you look at the market these are the type of sectors that go up in bad times next up my favorite gold remember last time we talked about this i talked about building a base we broke out i bought my first piece there in december 21st but my second piece here, and I said it's gonna consolidate because it's gonna break out and take a look. That's exactly what it did. Love gold right now, might continue to add to that next week. How about healthcare? Same thing, found a bottom, worked its way up to 50 and 200, looks real strong. Wrapping it up here, wow. REITs, this is what we've seen big time this year. You know, we bought over here, and we had to wait, did better than other sectors at the end of the year, but look at that. Straight up, top performing sector year to date, really strong. So from here, let's wrap things up. Fear and greed, we've gone from 31 to 60. Greed is back in. Now, thanks so much for watching. Michael Loftus, Wealth and Wisdom TV. Don't forget, it's all about the PowerPoint.